Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. A while ago I did a video on accelerating Hugging Face models on AWS accelerators, uh, Trainium and Inferentia 2. And we recently introduced on the hub a new feature that makes it even simpler to deploy Hugging Face models on AWS on Inferentia 2 instances. And so in this video, I'm going to start from the Hugging Face hub, pick one of our LLMs and show you the simplest way to deploy it to AWS on Amazon SageMaker with Inferentia 2 powered instances. And you'll see we won't write a line of code, which is great. Okay, let's get started. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider joining my YouTube channel. If you do, don't forget to enable notifications so that you won't miss a thing in the future. You could also share this video on your social networks or with your colleagues, because if you enjoyed it, it's likely someone else will. Thank you very much for your support. How can we deploy Hugging Face models on AWS in the simplest possible way? Well, this is how. So starting from the model page, and here I've selected our own uh, Zephyr 7 billion model. Click on Deploy. And you can see a number of deployment options, right? Select Amazon SageMaker. SageMaker is the machine learning service on AWS. And that's the, and this is the one we work on together with AWS to build the compute environments needed for training and inference, of course. So select this and immediately you see a code snippet using the SageMaker SDK. And if we run this, uh, in a Jupyter Notebook with AWS credentials, well, we will deploy the model on SageMaker. As simple as that. So you don't need to write a single line of code. Uh, in this example, the model will be deployed on a G5 instance, which comes with um, an NVIDIA A10G GPU, uh, pretty cost effective. So we could do this um, and feel free to try. But you see also, hey, there's a call out here saying, we could also try this on Inferentia 2, and let's do this because Inferentia 2 is a, a very cost-effective solution for LLM inference. So let's pick this. We see another code snippet which, which, is, which is fairly similar. Uh, we just have a few, uh, a few extra parameters. Um, we'll use a different container, but we'll get to that. And this time we're going to deploy on an Inferentia 2 instance, okay? If you're completely new to Inferentia 2, pause the video now, uh, go and check out the, uh, the deep dive video I did on, uh, on Inferentia 2 and Trainium. I will put the link in the video description. Uh, everything else will make more sense if you do that, okay? If you know what Inf2 is, go ahead. So we could just copy this and paste it and we would be able to deploy it, all right? So let's jump to a Jupyter Notebook. Okay, uh, so I'm using SageMaker Studio here, but uh, you know it's not important. You could run this anywhere, uh, even locally, as long as you have your AWS credentials filled in. So what do we do? Uh, well, import, obviously, a few dependencies. Get the uh, IAM role, the execution role for SageMaker, which will allow us to perform SageMaker API calls. Then uh, straight out from that code snippet, we have the, the model information, so to speak. And uh, of course, and of course, we're using that uh, Zephyr 7 billion model. And we have a few more parameters. So some of them kind of make sense, I guess, batch size max sequence length, et cetera, et cetera. And there's this one, which is really important, HF number of cores two. So that's the number of Inferentia two cores we will use to run the models. So if you remember from the previous video, each Inferentia device or Inferentia two device comes with two neuron cores, okay? So when we say two cores, we mean one device. So the more cores you use, the more um, uh, opportunities you give um, for tensor parallelism and all that good stuff, which we covered before. But in fact, I've tried to keep it uh, simple here 
and uh, and we'll stick to two cores uh, and batch size one. Okay, small small config. All right. Uh, well, next we build um, hugging face model object in the SageMaker SDK using the information here uh, on the model itself and the name of the Docker container that we will use on SageMaker. And you don't need to build it yourself. We've already done that. Um, that's part of, again, of the engineering work we do together with the AWS. And so all you have to say is, hey, I want to use this container. I want the uh, LLM image um, and I want the Neuron X flavor. And uh, of course, Neuron is the name of the AWS SDK for Inferentia 2, okay? So just grab the container, pre-installed, pre-optimized, um, nothing to worry about here. And then we just call deploy, right? And in fact, I'm actually using a sm even a smaller instance that, than what comes in the code snippet. Uh, I'm shrinking to uh, inf to 8XL, which comes with um, one single Inferentia 2 device, so two cores and uh, uh, a little more um, host memory, which I guess helps run PyTorch and everything else, but just one Inferentia device, okay? Run this, um, so it deploys for, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes, something like this. And when it's done, you should see something like this, an endpoint in service. We can take a look. All right, lots of information. Uh, we can see the logs. Yeah, why don't we look at the logs? Okay, so let's go down a little bit, find the actual log file. All right, and well, no errors. That's good. <laughs> okay, so this has been correctly deployed. And if it doesn't deploy correctly, obviously you would see something here that tells you hopefully why something went wrong. If we go down here, we could probably see, yes, our instance type, inf28xl, and monitoring, a little bit of monitoring, I guess, although this isn't really busy. Yes. Okay. All right. So the endpoint is good to go. So now let's go back to our notebook and we can run inference. So we could run inference just like this, um, but I, um, I've expanded a little bit on the code snippet because I wanted to show you how to do it, right? Um, and this is how you would apply the... Um, the, the chat template, right? As you know, those models, you know, Llama, uh, Mistral, Zephyr, expect a certain uh, prompt uh, for, for, the, for the chat uh, interaction to work correctly. So unfortunately, all those formats are different, but uh, the, um, the Transformers library, uh, or actually the tokenizer library, uh, makes it quite simple. Uh, you can just define your chat template in, in this format, which is the OpenAI format, okay? So the, the system prompt and then the, the actual question. Apply that uh, template to your uh, inference query. And then under the hood, this will be uh, um, translated, so to speak, to the exact format that the model expects, okay? So you don't need to worry too much about uh, how Llama works or Mistral works, etc. Okay, uh, then some parameters, um, and I won't go too deep into these, otherwise this will end up being a one hour video again. Uh, so if you're not too sure what top P and temperature and top K, etc., cetera, are, uh, there's this super cool uh, blog post that explains everything. And again, I will put all those links and a link to the notebook in the video description. Okay, all right. And now we can just go and predict, okay? So you can ignore those two lines as the, you know, I added a comment there. The reason why I added this is because as I predict back and forth between, I would say, normal inference and streaming inference, I need to reset everything back to default. But uh, you could just run this out of the box and that's how it will work, okay? So what was the question again? Uh, yeah, as a friendly AI engineer, please answer the following question. Why are transformers better models than LSTNs? Okay, let's give it a shot. 
So here, um, we'll get the answer in, in one go, okay? Um, streaming is not enabled, so we're sending the query to the model. It will generate the complete answer and send everything back to us, okay? And that's what we see here. And it is a good answer, right? Um, bullet points, transformers can handle longer sequences, transformers are more efficient, transformers can better capture content, can handle parallelism better, right? So, good answer. But, of course, we'd like to see some streaming, right? Uh, just like uh, the typical chatbot does. So, I, I actually uh, found this super, super nice blog post from AWS, um, which introduces uh, streaming support in SageMaker, and that's still uh, fairly recent. So, until maybe, uh, yeah, I guess a couple of months ago at most, we couldn't do this. So, this is a really new feature. And they provide some uh, very nice example and, uh, and some utility code to make it very, very straightforward to, do the, the, to handle streaming. So that's what you see here. And again, I won't dive too deep into that code. Uh, you can go and read it and read the blog post. Uh, again, all the links will be provided here. Okay. And yeah, in a nutshell, we just need to iterate. Uh, we need a, an iterator on the output to read, you know, line by line and, and, and display things as they come instead of waiting until the end. Okay. So just a bit of utility code. Then uh, using the exact same endpoint, um, I will just change deserialization because now we're just uh, we're not just uh, deserializing that that big chunk of JSON in one go. We are streaming, right? So we need to set the stream deserializer, and we just need to add an extra parameter to the uh, to the body saying yeah, stream equal true. Okay. Everything else is the same. The, the generation parameters are the same. The prompt is the same, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and now we can invoke uh, the endpoint again. Okay, and as you can see here, I am using uh, a Boto three API. I am not using the SageMaker SDK. As far as I know, um, there is no way to do this with the SageMaker SDK, or maybe I just missed. Uh, a recent release, uh, but the blog post uses this. So maybe I just missed how uh, you do this with uh, with uh, the predict API. So if somebody has figured it out, uh, <laughs> just post a, a comment, but certainly this should be possible. Okay, so invoking the endpoint, and then I will just iterate using my uh, utility class, iterate on the answer, and, um, and hopefully display it uh, Little by little. So let's try this. Okay, so now invoke the endpoint. Okay, and now we can start reading the streaming response. So hopefully it will stream right. Oh, it's fast. Yes. Okay, yeah, let's do that again. Okay, maybe let me scroll up a little bit. Okay, yes. Ah, there we go. All right. So um, slightly different answer because that's what LLMs are. <laughs> Very creative, but still good, right? Uh, talking about self-attention, parallel computation, uh, no vanishing gradients, fewer parameters, better performance, etc., etc. And we get the cool, uh, you know, uh, progressive streaming user experience. So as you can see, it's really easy to, uh, to deploy those models. Uh, what did we do? We copy pasted the code from the code snippet uh, and uh, I actually just reused uh, that streaming uh, a utility function from a blog post. And, and that's all there is to it. So obviously infrastructure is managed completely by SageMaker. The inference container is provided. And, um, and well, you can just, uh, the only missing thing is just uh, building a nice little uh, user interface on top of this. And you have your uh, POC uh, chatbot, right? Running inside your AWS account fully private, uh, it could be in a private VPC, and uh, and it's really nice, right? So those of you who know a little more about Inf2 or maybe who watched that deep dive video could be wondering, hey, wait a second, we're supposed to compile models 
for inf2, right? Uh, we need to compile the vanilla PyTorch model for the, uh, the inferentia uh, uh, chip. And did we do this here? Uh, excellent question. And no, we didn't, right? Uh, if we come up here a little bit, what did we actually do, right? Well, we started from the vanilla model and there is no compilation. And you can say, well, did it happen under the hood or something? Uh, it could have. Uh, and we have this weird message saying your model, your model is not compiled. Ignore it. It shouldn't be here. It's, it's really just a bug. Okay. So what happened under the hood? Well, what happened under the hood is we actually pre-compile um a lot of models for you and we cache them on the hugging face hub so that when you ask for this particular model what the container does first is check if there is a compiled version in the cache uh, that lives on the hugging face hub and if there is well then it downloads this and uh, and deploys it directly okay and if there isn't it's going to say well you need to compile the model first okay Makes sense. So where's that cache? So go back to the hub and look for AWS Neuron. Okay, which is the uh, the organization where we store all the resources for uh, Tradium and inferential models. Okay. And if you look at this list, you will see uh, many existing models, right? And you may see different variants, okay? Um, we have different variants compiled for a different number of cores, etc., etc. Llama, code Llama, etc., etc. Llama 2, 7B, 30B. And we keep adding more, okay, all the time. So, um, so there you go. That's actually, uh, that's actually what happens under the hood. And um, we grab those pre-compiled models. Here, let's look at this, right? And we can see, okay, JSON config files. And we see the NEF files, Neuron Executable File Format files, which are uh, um, basically ready to go, ready to be loaded, right? And so we maintain the cache, we populate the cache again and again. So when you do, when you do deploy from, uh, from one of those models, um, there is no compilation step, right? So you can take a look at the repos, you can take a look at the cache, you can use the optimum neuron library uh, CLI. There's actually um, uh, a way to query the cache programmatically and see if, uh, if a model is already cached or not. Um, and that's how you do it. So here I'm deploying from one of ours, but um, you could uh, you could do the same. You could take one of the models from your organization and um, and um, either populate your own cache or or deploy straight from the compiled uh, repository. Right? That works too. All right. That's what I wanted to show you today. And you can see how we keep simplifying model deployment and model inference. Um, just go to the model page, find the code snippet for SageMaker, copy paste this to a notebook, run it, and you can use GPU and you can use Inferentia. All the infrastructure is managed. The inference containers are provided. Um, you can steal all those good <laughs> code samples from the AWS blogs as well. Uh, you can run streaming inference and uh, you can really build your uh, prototype and uh, in no time and, and start testing it and scaling it all the way to production, right? Uh, a lot of work has already been done for you and well, we hope you like it. Well, I'll see you soon with more content and uh, until next time, keep rocking.